In this section, we're going to talk about the ideal team player, what it means to be that person. Because when it comes to putting together a team, if we can develop people with these skills and these attributes, or we can hire people with them, everything becomes easier. And there are three virtues that an ideal team player has. The first and most important is humility. Now, if pride is the root of all sin, then humility is the antidote to that. That's why it's so important. And most of us are familiar with humility in as much as we know that people that are humble are not arrogant. They're not ego-centered. And that's true. And that is critical. Even in parishes, we can have people that struggle with their ego. And it can destroy things, especially in a parish because it stands out so much. So we have to guard against this in the people we hire. And when we see people that have this, we have to love them enough to try to develop in them the, the virtue of humility. But there's another part of humility that's important to understand, and it's this. People that lack confidence, that don't believe in themselves and believe that God has given them real gifts, they too lack humility. Because really, the defini definition of humility is the adherence to truth. And if God gave you skills and gifts, to deny those is a violation of humility. C.S. Lewis once said, to be humble is not to think less of yourself, it's to think of yourself less. And that's what we're talking about here. Sometimes we see a person who lacks any confidence. And I've seen this in parishes and we think she or he is very humble when in fact they're depriving the team of their, of their good ideas or their talents because they're always denying that they're important or that they have anything to say. So we need to understand that. Ego and arrogance is not humility, of course, but neither is a lack of any confidence. So that's the first and most important attribute of an ideal team player. Something we need to look for when we're hiring, certainly, and develop in the people that we have. The second attribute or virtue is what we call hunger. And that's a work ethic, a, a desire to get things done, a desire to have high standards and go above and beyond. Now, this is a pretty easy one to understand. It's sometimes not easy to teach later in life. And I will say in some parishes, it can be a problem. Some people go into ministry thinking that they're not going to be held to a high standard and they don't have to work very hard or have high levels of excellence. Now that's so painful for those that do. And I think many people, most people go into ministry for the right reasons, but when they work on a team with people that don't share that, it can be so demoralizing. And too often we permit that or we tolerate that when really we shouldn't because there's no work more important than what's done in a parish. So hunger, hungry people are those who go above and beyond, have strong work ethics, and don't have to be told constantly to do things. They don't do the minimum amount, they go above and beyond. That's pretty straightforward. The final and third virtue is what we call smart. Smart is not intellectually smart, it's interpersonally smart. I guess it would relate to emotional intelligence. It's does a person understand how their words and actions affect others on the team? And are they able to discern or notice when people are in a particularly different mood? Can they adjust their behaviors and actions? And do they know how to work well with others? Do they have common sense around people? That kind of smarts is far more important than book smarts. And when you're working in a parish, it's even more important than, I mean, you want to be theologically true, but sometimes the most deep theological people don't know how to work with others. They might be a wonderful author or even a speaker on certain things, but they don't necessarily work well on a team. We need to be humble, hungry, and smart, all three of those. And that's what's interesting here. If you're lacking in an egregious way, even one of these, there's going to be a problem. Let's talk about that right now. If a person were humble, the most important one, and hungry, very important. That's a great combination. But if they were lacking in emotional intelligence or interpersonal smarts, we would call them an accidental mess maker. They have all the right intentions. They work hard, they care about others, but they just don't know how to interact with others and they often cause problems on the team. They're like that puppy dog that you have to clean up after. And they knock things off the shelf and break things, but they mean well and they're cute. So it's okay, but over time, it can be pretty costly. So to the extent that we can hire people with emotional intelligence and help people that don't have that develop it, and it's true, we can take an accidental mess maker and make them an ideal team player. Let me say this, I have great patience for accidental mess makers because their intentions are good. And in a parish, that's so important. What about a person that's humble, which is so important, and smart, they're really good at dealing with other people, but they're not hungry. 
They lack passion for what they do and high standards. This we call the lovable slacker. Now, because they're humble and smart, they're very lovable and fun to be around, but they're not necessarily putting out everything into their work. They're, they're leaving early or they're doing just enough or maybe a little bit less. Other people have to make up for what they're lacking. And over time, this can create resentment and frustration on a team. So we have to make sure that a person is really passionate and hardworking and they're trying to do their very best. Even if they say, well, I could make more money in the private sector, what we would say is, well, you're never gonna do the work that's this important. So not doing it well has greater cost and higher stakes than someone in another job. Okay, so we have the accidental mess maker who lacks interpersonal smarts. We have the lovable slacker who lacks hunger or the work ethic. The third is by far the most dangerous. And this is what we call the skillful politician. It's a person who's hungry, has ambition, and wants to work hard. And they're really smart. They're good at working with other people. They go to meetings and they behave well. But deep down inside, it's not about others. It's not about the mission. It's about them. And yes, there are people like this even in parishes. And it's sad and it's tough. And God help us to help those people learn to, to really embrace humility. And let's do our very best never to hire somebody who's really in it for themselves. But even in ministry, there's those rock stars that want to be important and they want to stand out. And they're not going to make sacrifices for their teammates, even though they're going to pretend that they do. The problem with these these politicians, if you will, is by the time we figure out that they're not humble, the damage has been done. We have to be so careful never to hire people that really, really struggle with humility. The work we're doing is just too important. I like to say this, if a person only had hunger, they were not smart or they weren't humble, don't teach them how to be smart first. Teach them how to be humble because if you teach them how to be smart, you're creating a skillful politician. Now, why is this so important? Because so oftentimes when we hire or when we develop people, we focus on their technical skills. We say, well, this person was a music ministry, in music ministry someplace else, or they've been in youth ministry for years, or they're really good at accounting, so we should hire them in this job. And so often we get burned this way. The most important thing we need to understand when we hire somebody, do they have the minimum level of skills? We can teach more skills. What's really tough to teach is interpersonal and character related um, capability. Hire for cultural fit. Hire ideal team players. Teach people how to do other things better. Yes, there's musicians out there with great passion but have a little less skill than others, but because they're ideal team players, they raise up everyone around them. And there's musicians that are so talented but so into themselves that they drive people away from music ministry and ultimately that keeps people from knowing Jesus. So have the courage to value humble, hungry, and smart over technical skills and you'll find that working is more, more enjoyable and that the mission becomes more central to everything you do. Go out there and find and develop ideal team players.